she has all of the innards of what's going on with that organization as they look to advance past the Houston Texans this weekend. We have the uh, dish on the other one seed, the well-rested and healthy crazily healthy like if they lose this is an epic loss an epic loss of history historical proportions for the Niners squad already messing with my words because I've had a drink of alcohol let's go it's uh, an honor to have Deshaun Jackson on the show former Raven of course what do you want Greg Roman to Chicago got to ask him about that the RG3 Jay Gruden thing Guess who was in that meeting room? Deshaun Jackson. Huge news. So we'll talk about that. That's like uh, eating away at Twitter right now. He also uh, like casually was a former Buccaneer. So we've got lots to talk to him about. Very excited um, as we set the table. Let's take a look at the throwdown round one last time this week. We started the show just getting you guys ready for the action. The divisional round sounds like a golf tournament, so I call it the throwdown round. Um, Texans, Baltimore Ravens, we'll get to that. So many ins and outs. Sarah Ellison joining us at the top of the show. Bucks, Detroit Lions, two former number one overall picks. Jared Goff, Baker Mayfield with the world to gain from a win there. Then we've got the Chiefs and the Bills. We've talked uh, extensively about that with Sal Capaccio and BJ Kissel just yesterday. We had Deion Dawkins on the show. Hard to not root for our guy. If you snow, you snow. And then you got those Packers and the Niners, the other one seed. So I want to really set the table with these two. By the way, over at FanDuel Sportsbook, the odds haven't changed since yesterday. Very very heavily favored one seeds. Revere the one seed. And what I said, uh, you know, I, I had a nice little chat. I haven't really talked about who I want in the Super Bowl. I want the best teams, and the best teams are the Ravens and the Niners. That's who I want in the Super Bowl. Um, they've got uh, some frisky teams coming to town this weekend. We want to welcome in Sarah Ellison, who crushes it, co-host of the Ravens Vault podcast. You can see it on YouTube. You can find it on Apple, Spotify, Google Play, everywhere you can. Uh, Sarah Welcome. Raven's key to success, obviously eating 7,500 pounds of PB&J Uncrustables, which I learned just yesterday. A lot of beef jerky in that locker room as well. But I need the real nitty gritty here. Uh, I was talking about Josh Allen and legacy with Sal Capaccio, a longtime uh, beat reporter, silent reporter for the Bills yesterday. Legacy with Lamar Jackson. Let's get into it. You know, he's cool as can be. The snowballs, the whole vibe is great. What is the importance of this game for how he is held? And maybe even more than just for him. What's at stake? Yeah, well, for him, it's definitely not something that he wants to put all of this weight on his shoulders. He's trying to keep loose. But for everybody in the media and all those that talk around him, about him, it's about can Lamar Jackson, a true dual threat quarterback, win a Super Bowl? There's been so many people going all the way back to Bill Pullian saying he couldn't do this. And then, you know, people say, oh, he can't win in the playoffs. Uh, but this is uh, don't don't sleep on Lamar. Don't <laughs> sleep on these Ravens. Uh, it's been a couple years since he's been healthy and in the playoffs. He is laser focused. And John Harbaugh just recently was on the Adam Schefter show mm -hmm. and he talked about how Lamar Jackson has really revolutionized the quarterback position. And that's not to say that there hasn't been quarterbacks that are athletic or that can run, but this is the first time where you've had an organization and a player that are unafraid of being a true dual threat. And now he's showing other quarterbacks like him that, you know what, there is a place for you in the NFL. There is a place to go and succeed, but you know, people are going to say that's not complete until he does it in the playoffs. But, Kay, I can tell you, I have never seen a team. I've covered Ray Lewis. I've covered Ed Reed. Mm. This team is so locked in. It doesn't matter what success they've had in the past. Beat the 49ers. Beat Miami. Doesn't matter. Job is not complete. They know the mission at hand, and they're not going to get ahead of themselves one game at a time. You you, know, you mentioned some of the people uh, with not the criticism, maybe the disbelief. I know you you uh, kind of you and your co-host went in on Steve Stephen A. Smith about it as well. But just as far as giving you know the 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 having to prove himself over and over and over again. But people love to hover, not just Stephen A. I mean, they loved. It's an easy low hanging fruit to have that one in three cloud sort of just yeah. follow him. Uh, do you have, in covering this team, and it's so unique and it's so different, what is the main reason things will change, especially against a young, hungry Houston team? One of my favorite quotes that I think isn't getting enough national love this week is Lamar coming out and saying, like, man, CJ looked a lot better than I did in my, in my, in my uh, playoff debut, and it's true. It is true. Lamar, Lamar is as honest as they come. Yeah. He's just straight up. 
And, you know, I feel like confident people can give compliments to others. Sometimes you don't give compliments because you're insecure. Lamar is one of the most secure and just loving and fun. He's just fun, you know? And so, yeah, he's like, yeah, CJ played better in his first playoff game than I played in mine. But, yeah, Lamar had played in that rookie year, uh, I think, six games. He came in midway uh, when, when Joe Flacco got hurt and then all of a sudden turned things around mm -hmm. and then... That 2019 team, I mean, that's that's the PTSD in, in Baltimore, believe me. And people think it's like, uh, you know, maybe it was rust or whatever. And it just, it's it's definitely one of those things where um, any given Sunday, you can have your worst game. But I also think that team, and I said this to you before, uh, Kay, that team was a little bit more one-dimensional. I, I know that Lamar Jackson led the league in passing touchdowns that year, but this this 2023 slash 24 team is by far more complete. He has more weapons. He himself is hardened because of the experience he's been through. The defense this year is better than that 2019 defense. It's just a more complete mm. roster. So you'd be making a mistake if, if you felt like it was the same roster and it was the same Lamar Jackson. It's just the makeup is completely different. Well, there, you know, and I know we have Dalvin Cook, but Monken's letting him cook. He's letting him play the way he wants to play, and it's meant the world. And I really think, I mean, this signing of Dal, hearing Harbaugh say he'll he'll get in there. We, we, we've seen it in yeah. a Like, he's going to play. I see a lot of one-yard, one-touchdown stat lines <laughs> down this stretch for this 1C team. We have Mark Andrews back. That, to me, is the biggest difference when just, like, talking about this team year in, year out. They're healthy, minus the Marlon Humphrey thing, which is kind of weird and obviously sad. Uh, and we'll get that, but, like, Getting getting Mark Andrews back could literally change the entire complexion of what this looks like down the stretch in the AFC through the Super Bowl. Torrey Smith, legend, of course, loved, loved uh, by that Baltimore team. He is sort of pointed to the lack of selfishness and ego as the most impressive thing about this 2023-2024 uh, this squad. What is, what is the characteristic that you think sort of defines this team? It really is bananas. Uh, it's funny because <laughs> from the outside – when OBJ was signed here or Jadavian Clowney, they came to Baltimore with certain reputations. And everything that I had heard, just from the outside, I hadn't covered them. Obviously, I'm more lasered focused on, on the Ravens. But from the outside, it's like, uh, you know, people would say OBJ selfish or Jadavian Clowney when, when his comments, when, when he left and his comments about Garrett and this and that. It is not, that is not the reputation that they've, that is not the type of guys that they've come here with. To see OBJ, the way he has just put his arms around Zay Flowers. Hmm. I remember some media saying, oh, OBJ, he's going to start to get jealous when Zay starts taking. No, he has been 1,000% <laughs> the biggest cheerleader for Zay Flowers and giving him as much of his knowledge that he can. Jadavian Clowney just, like, he, he's come here and he's not like a Miles Garrett or or a Nick Bosa or whatever where you, it, it's just like the, he gets all the, everything set up for him to get the sacks. He's one of many. Not only do the Ravens lead in sacks, but I think they have the most people who have sacks on the team. It really is such, I don't know what it is. It's it's from the beginning. I, they just genuinely like each other. Yeah. And it starts with Lamar on one side and Roquan Smith on the other. I mean, Mark Andrews goes down. He's the biggest cheer, cheer le cheerleader for Isaiah Likely. Now he's coming back. And Isaiah's like, yeah, Mark's back. It just... It, you don't see it all that often. I think you see it with some Super Bowl winners because you have to have good chemistry. But selflessness and and just laser focus are the two kind of phrases that come to mind when I think of this team. It's well said, and I hope that Roquan and company are able to stop the run a little bit uh, with, I think, Devin Singletary's got something coming. I think D'Amico, I mean, they don't know what they don't know on the other side, but it seems like the pressure isn't really, at least yet, sinking in on this Ravens squad. We'll see what happens, of course, this weekend. A lot of expectations in a heavily favored Ravens squad. Uh, and you're, I just love talking to you. I appreciate the time so much. I know you're so busy. Ravens Vault is amazing. I listen to it all of the time. Please check out yes. the podcast, guys. You and your uh, co-host uh, are amazing. YouTube, Apple, Spotify, and Google Play on that. Thank you, Sarah. Good luck. Appreciate you, Kay. Anytime. Appreciate you. Okay, the other podcast that I listen to regularly, we got to talk about my friend Rob Guerrera, all thing about the AFC to the NFC's one seed, the Niners. Uh, Stats, uh, who is famous for the Gold Standard Network, which he, you just launched out of nowhere and is absolutely crushing it. I don't know how you did it. I need to take the master class to get my YouTube numbers up like you are. Um, uh, I would like you to know about your IMDb page. <laughs> talk to me. 
Well, thanks to you, Kay, I suddenly have an IMDb page. I have no idea how this happened, but there it is. Uh, for your appearances here, which we love, and we lo I love your NFL Jam t-shirt, by the way. I think that's incredible. You. Uh, you've got merch. You've got it all. So do the Niners, okay? The Niners, this is one of those games where I'm like, oh, my God, like, tail of the tape doesn't exist. It's so heavily favored on the Niners squad, and they're so healthy. Like, it's weird to think how healthy them and the Ravens, the other one seed are. Um, where does your head go when you're looking at this message, uh, at this matchup, other than hating Kurt Benkert? <laughs> I you know, Kurt's on your show saying, oh, something's weird about this matchup. The 49ers haven't played a meaningful game. Yes, that's what happens when you kick the tar out of everybody you've played basically for the last nine weeks, and you don't have to play a meaningful game. But you mentioned Decay. They are rested. They are healthy. Only one player is going to miss this game. Cleveland Farrell is the only player for the 49ers that's not going to play excluding guys like Talanoa Hufanga, who, of course, tore his ACL. So they are rested. They are healthy. They have the better roster. They have the better coach. They're at home. I think they're going to roll them. Uh, Brock Purdy, is he big game tested to your standards of feeling comfortable in this matchup? I think he is, and he's more big game tested than Jordan Love, that's for sure. Despite the fact that Brock is a year younger than Jordan Love, he still has more playoff experience because, remember, Brock – played in two full playoff games last year, beating the Seahawks and the Cowboys. So he's got more playoff experience than Jordan Love. And I think he's got less pressure on him because Jordan Love is going to have to be Superman to win this game. Brock Purdy's just going to have to do what he's always done, get the ball to the playmakers and let him work. I mean, stats, what are we even doing there? Then why, like, what are you even talking about on, on your show all week if it's just going to be this like easy thing over the, over the Packers? Are there no concerns? Do the Packers not have an advantage in any category? Uh, if it was a throwing competition, I maybe would give Jordan Love an advantage over Brock Purdy. But the, look, there's a reason the 49ers are the number one seed and the Packers are the seventh seed. OK, Green Bay was nine and eight this year. They won one more game than they lost. Even with Jordan Love going on this amazing streak of one interception in his last 10 games, the Packers turnover differential for the year was zero. So they still managed to turn the ball over. The 49ers, I think, are going to get a couple turnovers. They're going to go up by multiple scores early in this game, and that is the exact game script the 49ers want. They're going to try to control the clock like they did. They executed perfectly against Dallas, of course. This is a different story. This is not McCarthy. This is Shanahan. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see if, like, you know, Aaron Jones, he's at practice. What does he have against Christian McCaffrey? All of that. I would say, like, if I'm, if I'm doing, like, a t an old school, you and me at NBC Sports in Stanford, like Matt Casey, make a Tail of the tape, check marks. Like I would maybe say secondary would is some at least with what Green Bay has looked like. I mean, say what you want about Barry, but you put them in a corner and he sort of comes to play. Secondary, they have a bit of an advantage. No worry about Christian Watson being back. No, I'm not worried about Christian Watson being back. We've seen receivers against the 49ers go off and have big games and it not matter at all. Devontae Adams eats the 49ers lunch. Cooper Cup has destroyed the 49ers this year. Uh, Puka Nakua has destroyed the 49ers and the Niners still win by double digits. This team has 11 wins by double digits this year in a league that's designed to create one score games. I know I sound like the big 49ers homer jerk guy, but this team's really good. What if they lose? Oh, that's a disaster. That's a complete and unmitigated disaster. There's no excuses for this 49ers team for all the reasons we just talked about, right? They're rested. They're healthy. They've got more playoff experience. There is no excuse to not make the Super Bowl, let alone lose this game. But there's no excuse not to make the Super Bowl this year for the 49ers. That is where they are. Who's the best guy on the team? Trent Williams, who I'm sure you were so excited to see. He wants to come back next year and, like, break tackle yeah. records. Let's go! Love it, baby. And God, <laughs> they need him. That line, other than Trent Williams, is is uh, mid yes, middling at best, let's say. So that was fantastic news. He's probably the best player on the team overall. But you're talking about a team that had seven all pros this year. That's how loaded this roster is. That's why you can't be losing to seven seeds in a divisional round off of a bye. You have to get this done. I will say this. And I want to get your X factor as my last question or the thing that you want to say, the bold predict, whatever you, whatever you want to do here. But I will say for me that not maybe not the X factor, but like I'm just giving a lot of love to Jake Moody right now. I'm I'm a, I'm just giving like you can, you know, 
didn't didn't wrap up the season because it was meaningless. You know, against the Rams, whatever. Lost to Cleveland. Rainy condition. There's a, there's a Robbie Gold shadow. I just I, like let's go, Jake Moody. Now's the time. Third round. A lot of faith on you, and it might come down to some a field goal or an extra point to win this thing. Well, it shouldn't come down to a field goal. If it has, <laughs> then something has gone horribly wrong for the 49ers. But you're right. There are some questions there. I will say Jake Moody has missed one extra point all season. He set the record for consecutive extra points made this year. He didn't miss a field goal until five weeks into his rookie season. Because you guys season. never kick field goals. So then what are we talking about, Because he, okay? he doesn't have the – because I'm wor- not worried. I just, like, there's a lot – there's a little um, – experience issue he, it's not like you guys roll him out there let him do his thing it's a fair question that's absolutely fair we don't know what he's gonna do i have seen the 49ers win the super bowl with a rookie kicker like they did in 1994 where doug Bryan kicked three field goals the <laughs> okay, entire playoff run <laughs> okay so and by the way the packers have their own field goal issues True. they have their own kicking True. issues so if it comes down to a field goal, both teams maybe should be a little nervous. <laughs> so nothing is stopping the 49ers. Do you have an X factor you want to put out there before we take a break? Uh, it's obvious, but it's Christian McCaffrey. I mean, look, all season you kind of had to, like, clutch your pearls, right? Don't overuse Christian McCaffrey. You got to keep him healthy. He's healthy. There's potentially at most three games left in the season. Give it to him 50 times because there's no way the Packers are stopping him. Okay, we're well, Sean Gary. Listen, to, listen to this man. All right, Mr. Barry, listen to this man. Uh, stats. We appreciate you so much. Go check him out on his pod. We'll get it all out onto the Twitter sphere. Uh, and I love how you know what you're so good at on yours that I'm not great at. You take comments as you talk, and you do it more seamlessly than I do. It's hard for me to weave it in and out. But you're like, this person said this, and let's get back. And it's really, uh, it's really been fun to listen to, and it's a really easy listen. Your co-host oh, is a you. little frisky. It depends on who you're talking about. Not, if you're talking about Grant Cohn, yeah, he absolutely is. The one I was talking is. about, like, strippers or something. That one I'm... Oh, he, no, Lev and Black. Yeah, he's, frisky. you know, i got to keep him in check a little bit. Keep him in check a little bit. I'll say that. Are you going to Vegas, potentially? I hope to, yes. And then we got two more games to, to take care of, but ideally I will be there. Then we'll chop it up in person. Appreciate your stats very yeah. much. Uh, we, of course, have lots to get to Deshaun Jackson.